Welcome to my house. Welcome to the Structure Talk podcast, a production of Structure Tech Home Inspections. My name is Ruben Saltzman. I'm your host, alongside building science geek, Tessa Murray. We help home inspectors up their game through education, and we help homeowners to be better stewards of their houses. We've been keeping it real on this podcast since 2019, and we are also the number one home inspection podcast in the world, according to my mom. Welcome to another episode of the Structure Talk podcast. Tessa, as always, good to see you. What's new? Hey, Ruben. Good to see you, too. Well, as you know, we got hit with a late April snowstorm (laughs) again. Yes. Yes. Just last week, we were talking about all of this flooding and all this rapid melt we're getting and people are out sun tanning and... Yes. And now we get another snowstorm. And as I look out my window, everything's covered in snow. Oh my gosh. It's- Hopefully it won't last long enough for you to be able to snowmobile significantly. But I hope you're right. <laughs> you know, it's funny because just like three days ago, it was like 90 degrees. We had record breaking heat here. And I've been working out at the wedding venue a lot recently. We're starting to have more weddings now. We had the landscaper out and he planted all these beautiful flowers in some of these planters around the buildings. <laughs> Yeah, out there yesterday, and it they just got buried in snow. So we we brushed off all the snow and then put you know tarps over them and stuff, and hopefully they'll survive. But it's uh you know what do you expect? We're in Minnesota. We get we always get teased at least once with uh, you know summer and then winter hits again. We do, we do, and I I mean I I unwinterized my outside faucet and yep. connected my garden hose, yep. and I was spraying down all the floor mats for my truck and all that. And I just thought about it right now. Like everything's covered in snow. It's all frozen. And I've got my garden hose attached to the side of my house with water in it. Oh no. Like what responsible homeowner (laughs) am I being right now? You're not the only one. I've done the same thing. It's supposed to be well above freezing today. So just kind of the yesterday and one night where it was really cold. Okay, good. Good, good. All right. So what's the topic of today, Ruben? What do we want to, what do we want to dive into? This is kind of jumping onto the blog, following along with what I've been writing about lately. And this one is going to be a tool list for homeowners. Not long ago, we did a podcast and and I wrote a blog about a, a tool list for home inspectors. And I think we even had Eric on the show when we were doing that. Yeah. And we talked about of our, a bunch of our favorite home inspection tools, although you know, we only got through like half the list. I've, I've got such a long list of home inspection tools, but it got me thinking there's a lot of must have tools for every homeowner. And I got to thinking about this as I was at a family member's house helping with a little project. And I was just a little bit frustrated at the lack of tools that were there. And it, <laughs> it was one of those unplanned projects where it's like, we weren't planning to do anything, but Hey, while you're here, let's do this. And it just, it took way longer than it should due to lack of proper tools. And so I've got a list for every homeowner, okay? And this is mostly for me. If I happen by your house, I want the right tools at my disposal. You know what? And I'm I'll just I'm laughing, Ruben, because I've, you know, I've read your your blog posts and I've seen this tool list must this must have tool list that you say. And I would say it's a must have for you. But not every homeowner is going to be doing all of these projects around the house and all of these other things. And so if you do have all these tools, good on you. But if you don't, I don't think it's the end of the world. Okay. All right. Well, as we go through these, I want you to be the opposition. I want you to argue why you don't want these tools or why they're not all that necessary. How's that sound? I think it'll be fun. Let's do it. Okay. First tool. Every homeowner needs. You ready, Tess? I'm ready. Hit me. A flashlight. Is this an order? Is this an order of importance, by the way? No, but I think a flashlight might be the most important one on there. I would agree with that. Okay. All right. We're one for one. Yeah. And now now my two cents on the flashlight. You can get any old flashlight. You can you can get some 30-year-old hand-me-down mag light that takes the D-cell batteries. Yeah. It's got a fragile bulb that hardly casts any light. You drop the flashlight once, your bulb's going to go bad. Yeah. Or you could get yourself a decent flashlight, and it's going to be powered by a lithium-ion battery. It's rechargeable. It's got 10 times the power, and it lasts forever. 
and it's going to be in you know something like a, the 1000 lumen class or higher that that would be my advice is get a decent flashlight that's going to hold a charge and it's going to get the job done my favorite brand for those is phoenix mm -hmm. but there are a gazillion brands out there and i think you can get a really good flashlight for somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 bucks today yeah. What do you think about that, Tess? I would agree with that. You know, before I became a home inspector, I just bought your, you know, average cheap flashlight <laughs> and use those. And you just, you go through so many batteries and the light is so dim that once I got a, I, I got a Phoenix, of course, after you recommended that, it's been amazing. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So everybody ought to get a good flashlight. Number two on my list, a cordless drill. How do you feel about that, Tess? <laughs> I think a cordless drill is a very handy thing to have around. I would say if you're just starting off and you're on a budget, this would be like something that you could aspire to having as long as you have various screwdrivers, you can get the job done. But it's very nice. It's a luxury to have a drill for sure. Okay. You're upgrading that to a luxury. All right. <laughs> <laughs> for you, you probably use your drill every day, multiple times, right? This, this I'm pretty is like, sure. Yeah. I'm sure I do. Now, here's my advice on a drill. Don't settle for some hand-me-down 20, 30-year-old drill from your parents, and it's going to have a nickel cadmium battery that has a wicked memory where yeah. it'll hold a charge for about three minutes. You know, you pull the battery off the charger. You got a fresh battery. You run it for about three minutes, and then your battery, it's dead. I have used those drills. Don't do it. If you're going to get a drill, get a decent drill. Spend a little bit of money on it. I mean, I Tessa, I still remember the first drill I got. I got a Ryobi tool set at a garage sale. Huh. And I bought new lithium-ion batteries for these drills. And I still have that drill that I got at a garage sale probably 20 years ago. Wow. And I've since, I've gotten newer batteries, but yeah. the drill still works fine. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big 18 volt drill and I've had it for a long, long time. Well worth the money. I've got yeah. new drills since then. I, I like to have, you know, a, <laughs> a lot of drills. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> But it's not like it's some tool that you're going to use once or twice this year and you'll never use again. It's something you will keep using over and over again. So <laughs> I picture like Mr. Rogers with his, you know, his closet full of various, you know, the sweaters, you opening up your, you know, your garage and this being a wall of different colored drills, sizes, brands. <laughs> Oh, you are totally right. Which yes. flavor of the day do I want to use? I have so many cordless drills. Don't know why. <laughs> Way more than I need. Well, but. you know what's funny? My mom actually, she still has this drill that this is a generation before the ones you're talking about that are old, that have the batteries that only last for three seconds. This one doesn't even have a battery. You have to plug it in. And it weighs like 10 pounds and it's like solid steel. It's like yes. a beast. And it still yeah. works. It still works. It's just, it's not practical at all because you need a cord and it's super heavy and bulky and all of that. But uh, she still has it. Yeah. And it's probably a single speed drill where yes. you pull the trigger yep. and the motor is just full speed. <laughs> yeah, There's, definitely. I had one of those. It was a hand-me-down from my grandpa. My, my, my grandpa was a carpenter mm. and I had a hand-me-down from my grandpa for the longest time. And after not pulling it out of the shelf for about eight years straight, I finally said, okay, I don't need this. And I don't know what I did with it. I don't think I have it anymore, but yeah. Uh, yeah. They're relics. You know, they're relics. Have so many drills. You know, I would say, I know you recommend having a cordless drill for homeowners, but one tool that I think I would, if I had to choose between a cordless drill and an impact driver, I would choose an impact driver. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And you know, I, I might too, Tess. That's, Would you? That's a tough one. Yeah. I debated whether it should be a drill or an impact driver. So I, I did a recent DIY project at my parents' house and put up some shelving in one of their rooms in the basement. And also I just a week ago did the same thing in their garage. And I 
survived with just a drill for a very long time. Years ago, I left my impact driver at someone's house after an inspection and I never got it back. (gasps) So yeah, that was heartbreaking. But I was trying to do this project with a regular drill and I just, I couldn't get it done. I I couldn't sink the screws into the studs and it was just like, I was sweating. It was ridiculous. I'm like, I need to get an impact driver. (laughs) So I went to the hardware store and I was like overwhelmed by all the choices there are these days. I mean, brands and sizes and I mean, brush lists or not. And I was like, I have no idea. And ultimately, I just got a 12 volt Milwaukee impact driver because I have a Milwaukee 12 volt drill. Plotting. Yeah. And I'm happy the decision because, you know, I can use the batteries interchangeably with all my other Milwaukee tools and it's small and it's lightweight. And I have never run out of battery using it. Like, I don't think I would need anything bigger than that for stuff I'm doing. So, yeah, I would vote. That's a fantastic choice, Tess. And you know what? I, I applaud that. I love it. And if I was just going to buy one tool myself, it, I would probably go with an impact driver over a screwdriver too. And yeah. I would get the exact same one. That would be a great starter one. Exactly what you just described. The Milwaukee 12 volt yep. is tiny, powerful. It'll get the job done. Yeah. Yep. yep. We agree on that. And, and you know, that brings us to accessories a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, w- one argument for getting a drill over an impact driver is that a drill can be more versatile. You get, you can get more bits. I mean, you can put drill bits into a drill. However, yeah. today you can buy a full drill bit set that has hex bases that you just slip into your impact driver. Yeah, And you can still use an impact driver to drill holes. It works yeah. just fine. Exactly. Or so, an adapter, right? Like an adapter that you put in to your... You probably could. I've never tried using an adapter. I mean, with all the tools, it's just as versatile as a drill. Yep. So get a drill. And Tessa, you and I both agree for, for the first one that a homeowner buys, you don't need a big 18 volt. 12 volt is going to be just fine. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. All right, cool. Next one, let's stick with the drill theme. Yeah. I say if you if you have a drill or an impact driver, you need a bit set. Yes. Okay. Are you back yeah, me up there? Yeah. What accessory okay. should we buy if we buy an impact driver or drill? Ruben? Tell <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot well, of options you need a bit out there. Set. It's a total rookie move to take a little like Phillips bit and stick it right into your driver. <laughs> So you're having to put your driver right up against the screw. You need a bit holder. It's a magnetic extension piece. And then you put your bits into the bit holder. Any any kit you buy is probably going to come with a magnetic bit holder. Always just leave that in your impact driver or your drill. And then you need a full set of bits. And it's going to be various sizes of Phillips, of slotted, of square bit, mm-hmm. also known as Robertson bits, if you're really geeky. I did not know that. You yes. learn something new every day. Good. And Torx bits. And another name for those, some people might call them star bits. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have assorted sizes in all of these. That's a good starter bit set. And how much do you think you'll spend on that? Like a good um, good set? You know, you you could spend whatever you want. I, I, for some reason, I think you and I have talked about this. Around Christmas time, Home Depot and Menards, they've got all these little wing stacks in the middle of aisles. And they got this big bulk area in the middle of Home Depot where they put all this stuff up there and they've got bit sets for five bucks. And I just, I'm addicted to those and I buy bit sets (laughs) and I've got, I don't know. I probably have about a thousand bits at my house. I don't know what my problem is. Oh my is. gosh. Some people are addicted to shoes. You're addicted to bits. For sure. For <laughs> sure. But I mean, you can you can spend five bucks and get a halfway decent bit set. This is this is never going to be one of those break the bank. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's not a certain brand or anything that you'd say this is better than the other and this will last longer. Invest in that. You know, I, I'm guess I'm just I'm a fan of everything Milwaukee. Yeah. So I'm guessing Milwaukee's is probably better, but I've I've never I've never taken the time to seek them out. I just buy whatever's on sale. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So bit set. Is there anything else? Um, accessories. Well, I'd say drill bits. I mean, if you're going to have a drill or an impact driver, Mm -hmm. get a bit set. You want to be able to drill holes and things when necessary. And I'd say a a good starter set is going to go up to three eighths of an inch. And don't, I don't know. I, I don't like relying on a drill bit set that comes 
with all of your other bit tips because usually it's going to be really low quality black steel and it's going to dull the first time you drill into metal. Mm -hmm. Get a halfway decent drill bit set. You might you might spend 20 30 bucks on it, something like that. Can you agree? A well, drill bit set is a good thing to have. I was, you know, I was thinking about that. I might push back a little bit. I used to, you know, the, the drill bits for home inspections when we would have to, and not all the time, but sometimes when we would do flue gas analysis on like furnaces and we mm -hmm. would, you know, stick the probe inside the flue to, to check for CO and stuff. You'd have to drill a hole if there wasn't one already, but that was, that was, you know, the only time we would use it. And I've only used my drill bits at home a handful of times. Again, like putting up shelving or, you know, mm -hmm. pre-drilling something. Yes. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. So I wouldn't say I've ever gone through metal at home. I've just gone through drywall and into wood, you know, and it, okay. it's not an everyday thing. It's really not an everyday thing. Yeah. But you need those bits. You do. You will agree there. Yeah. For every time you got to drill into the wall, drill into a stud, you got hollow wall anchors, whatever yeah. it is. And, and yeah, and my two cents is that you're, you're a first time homeowner. You're going to have these bits for a long time. Yeah. Don't get something that's going to dull after you used it five to 10 times. It's, you will have it for a long time. So either way, whether you get the super cheap ones or you get better ones, you need, you need drill bits to go along with your drill. We can agree on that. Yeah. All right. Now here's one I bet you're going to push back on a socket set. What do you think about that, Tessa? <laughs> We have one, but I cannot tell you the last time I used it. Okay. I can't even remember. What do okay. you use yours for? Boy, I use it for everything. Really? I mean, I, I mean, not all the time, but I mean, putting chairs together, furniture, just, okay, I'll think about the last time I did it. Huh. I was putting up a mount for a TV in the living room mm. and the fasteners that go into the wall yeah. are these big hex head fasteners that you need a socket wrench to, yeah. to drill in. Okay. Without a socket set, how are you doing it? So I, TV I don't mounts. Know. That's a practical application I think everybody would, would agree with. We all have TVs in our houses and installing those. And if, if you're going to do any type of work on a bicycle, I mean, okay. if you want to do any of your own work, putting stuff together, taking it apart. Nah, okay, the other projects I'm that. thinking of are more <laughs> deep dive. Huh? I'll pass on that. <laughs> no working on your own bike? I'll take my bike to the bike shop. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. The lawnmower, I've got a bagger attachment, and every time I want to put it on or take it off, I need a socket set. Really? I, I, I got a, oh, I got a, a bolt pain. that needs to be adjusted there. The bike rack for our car, whenever I want to mm. put that on or take it off, I've okay. got a bolt that I need to go in the trailer hitch. Okay. That's uh, quite a few things. Well, the list goes on. I can see how your life. Just the stuff that I do frequently. Yeah, I can see how your life requires a socket set. <laughs> no, and and again for the socket set, I'd say get get a full set. Don't accept some hand me down hodgepodge kit. I bought my first socket set when I was sixteen. I was working at a hardware store. I still have that set. The fact and I mean, that you remember that it must have made an impact in your young life. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. It was the beginning of your love of tools and your various I so. collections. <laughs> I think so, definitely. And it's just, it's one of those things. You buy, spend a little bit more and you're going to have it for a long time. Yeah. And I've I've lost various sockets over the years, but mm -hmm. buy replacements. Yeah. Keep my kit full. Yeah. And on that, I'll say get, get a full kit that also has deep sockets because the first time you're working on a project, you got something all taken apart or you're you're halfway through a project and you realize you need a deep socket to complete your project and you don't have one, it is heartbreaking. Can, can, you can we back this up a second? Can you explain what the difference is between a deep socket and just a regular socket wrench is for anyone listening that doesn't know? All right. How do I use words to describe this? So a regular socket wrench will fit over a nut uh -huh. and you can fasten this nut down and the nut gets deeper and deeper onto a screw coming through. But if you've got a screw that's a little bit too long, as you keep tightening down this nut, the nut gets further and further down along the shaft of the screw to the point where you've got more than an inch of screw protruding. And all of a sudden, it's protruding so much it won't fit in your socket. Your socket isn't deep enough to even touch the nut anymore. Mm. And unless you've got a deep socket, you can't get your job done. That so, must drive you nuts. I'm sure that's happened to you a few times, huh? Pun intended, Tess, right? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> or, or it does not allow me to drive me nuts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> However you want to put it. Yeah. Yep. It goes very, go just very a bit crazy without all the right uh, the right tools. Another yeah, pun so, intended. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> every home needs a socket set. That's what I'm saying, Tess. Yeah. And and uh, you know some socket sets are going to come with a bunch of extra bits and all these other little things that that fit inside them. I don't like the idea of depending on that solely. Maybe you could use that as a backup. But every time I got a, I need to get a bit for my drill. I don't want to have to lug out my socket set and go digging through that. Mm-hmm. I just want a nice handy little container that that has my bits. Yeah. So it, it's only as a backup. Now, can I ask a quick question? Do yeah. you keep these bits accessible, like all of these tools somewhere in your garage or like it, it sounds like you use them a lot. Where do you have some place that's easily accessible to grab them? Great question, Tess. The primary location is in the garage. That's where like the mother load goes. <laughs> but, you know, as far as bits go, I've got I've got these little four volt drills that I keep in my kitchen. I got one in the kitchen, one in the basement. It's just a little Ryobi. I mean, it's basically an electronic screwdriver. Okay, yeah. It, it's not going to it's not going to drill anything. You you would never put a drill bit in these, but it's just because I'm lazy. I don't want to use a regular screwdriver. I've got those. And so I've got a bit set in my kitchen. I've got a bit set in the basement. And then all the rest of them get stored in the garage. Just, Sounds you know, to be like handy. you're prepared, well prepared for any situation. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Would have been a every good Every level though. of your house, almost every room has its own. <laughs> well, and you know what? While we're on that, we're talking about tools you should have on every level of the house. <laughs> uh, I, I will add that this is a, a tool that every homeowner should have. Try to argue with me, Tessa. Uh-huh. A tape measure. Ooh, I'm not gonna argue with you on that one. I think okay. I think that is a that is definitely a must have. And it's so affordable that no one can really make any excuses as to why they wouldn't have that in their collection. No, no. Now, is there a minimum length of tape measure someone should have? Oh, minimum length. You can get by with a 16 foot if you're just doing standard stuff, but I think you need something that's like a 25 foot or I don't want anything that's super huge and bulky either. I'm with you. I think, I think 25 foot is a good length to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least a 25 footer. Yeah. And then maybe get some smaller ones that you would distribute throughout the, the rest of the house. I've got, <laughs> I've got one in my office. We got one in the kitchen. My wife's got one in her office. Oh man! I mean, people are always taking tape measures. Yeah. Don't know why. Yeah. But you always need a tape measure for something, and it's just <sighs> handy to have a bunch of them. They're cheap. Yeah, it is true. I feel like I've got like four or five of them and seems like I can never find them when I need them because they've always moved to different locations. You end up using it more often when you have it accessible. Uh, Here's another one, a tool to distribute throughout the house. And Art, tell me you can't have one of these, a utility knife, Tessa. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, I would agree. Again, it falls in that category. You know, it's affordable and there's lots of uses for it. Yes. Yes. So affordable. And that's another one of those where, you know, I'd, I'd see them buy, buy a three pack for, for eight bucks or whatever. And Oh, okay. I'll get a three pack. And it's just the collapsible utility knives, the ones that fold in half. Yeah. So I have those distributed throughout the house. Uh-huh. Got them yeah. everywhere. I, I buy utility blades. Buy the 100 pack. So I I never work with dull blades. And, you know, my advice, if you're buying a utility knife, don't get the clunky old ones that your grandpa had where you need to take a screwdriver and unscrew it, uh, unscrew the, the handle to change the blade. That is such a pain in the butt. You get get the quick change, right? I'm, I'm laughing because that's the utility knife that I used when I was inspecting, and I would not recommend it at all. I mean, it was cheap, but what a pain in the butt to have to unscrew it and take it apart to put a new blade in. And then yes. you can never get the blade lined up properly, and you can't get mm-hmm. it closed, and the little the little button is falling out. So I would I would agree with you. Splurge, spend a little bit more money, and get the kind where you just it's an easy release for the blade, and then you put it back in. Yes, yes. And you know what I really like is the type of utility knife that folds in half. You don't have a blade that slides in and out, 
Yeah. You just have it where it folds in half in the middle. That's that's the only moving part that you have, really. It, they don't fail. They're easy to open. They take up half the space. They're great. And if you really want a nice one, I mean, if you want to splurge and spend like 15 bucks <laughs> on a utility knife. Let me guess. You could get Is it Milwaukee? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah, they are the not Milwaukee. sponsoring this, by the way. We just have to I, we have to let our listeners know, right, Ruben? They're not, not, although I'm working on that. I, I sure wish they would. Maybe after I they listen like to this tools. this podcast. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We can, we, I've we asked can them. only hope. I've reached out to them. <laughs> you have? Yeah. I have, just because I love their tools. I I talk about it so much. I ought to be paid. I agree. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Add to I'm your collection. Yep. But they, they do have a utility knife. I think it's called the, uh, it's the fastback and it's just got a little button you push and then you flip it open <laughs> and it's, and it, it feels ergonomic. I mean, it just feels good in your hand. It's, it's got spaces for your fingers to go in there that that's the one to get. Otherwise the point is you need a utility knife. Don't settle yeah. for the little hobby knife with the breakaway disposable blades. Mm, yeah. I mean, okay, if you want to keep one in your office, fine, I'll allow it, but <laughs> oh, man. that's it. No excuses. Uh, no. That's All good. Right. Well, Ruben, well, we've already, um, we've spent, what, almost 30 minutes talking about this must-have list, and we are not through it yet. How many We're not through we it. So you're thinking, do we go to a part two? I don't think I have a whole lot left okay. to cover. So let's. I just, think we can finish. Let's this. finish it out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So All what's right. next? Uh, next would be a hammer for hitting things. Yes. What do you think? Must have. Must have. Must I mean, have. even okay. if Get you're the hammer. most like novice, you know, uh, you don't do any DIY projects at home. You still need a hammer to hang that occasional picture. To I don't know. We could we could be creative and come up with the... a million uses for a hammer. Yeah. Everybody needs one. They're cheap. Yep. Get a hammer. Okay. Next. A pliers, a pair of pliers, and I'll be specific. I'll say get a long nose pliers because a long nose pliers is more versatile than your traditional set of pliers. What do you think? I would agree with that. Is that is another name for that a needle nose pliers? You know, we're is getting something technical different. now, yeah. but a long nose pliers is, it has a longer nose than a traditional pair of pliers, but a true needle nose is going to be really thin. And it's only good for more delicate work. And the, what do you call it? What's, what are the, what's the business end of a player's called? The business end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting this bonus question. Well, whatever those things are called, they're going to be thin and they bend much more easily on a needle in those players. Okay. So some people may use the terms interchangeably, but along those players is going to be much thicker on the end. Okay. Yeah, so I, it'll it'll do more serious business. I would agree with that. I think that's that's a good tool to have. And All right. actually, you know what? One tool that I think is great that I have that covers the basis of the last few things we've talked about is actually like a, a multi-tool or like a Leatherman, something that's got a lot of these things all in one. I love those. Yes. Yes. Love those too. My favorite one is made by Gerber. It's it's called the Gerber Crucial. And I have I'm Googling that right now. I like it so much that I bought backups. And- <laughs> Wait, for anybody that's listening to this, obviously you're listening. This is a podcast. You can't see it. Ruben just scrambled, rolled across his floor mat to a shelf on his desk and pulled out this tool. <laughs> and it's it's in an unopened package. Just in case I lose one, I've got another one in a package because I can't live without it. <laughs> Ruben, would you say that, you know, all of these stash tools throughout your home in various locations gives you comfort? Absolutely. <laughs> <does so. laughs> Very much so. <laughs> when I when I travel, it's like, all right, what tools can I bring and what can't I bring to I, security? I was just thinking that, like, what happens when you go on vacation and you're packing your bag and you're like, you know, you're leaving behind all your security blankets. I, I am. And you know what? The multi-tool is the one thing I just don't want to compromise on. I will check my bag just so I can bring that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how many times have you saved the day on vacation because of your little Gerber crucial? Every time, Tess. <laughs> Every time. 
there's always something. It's so nice to have a players. Yeah. I don't I don't know. And a, and a, and a blade. Yeah. For some reason or another. You yeah. it's it's for all those times that you know you don't know what you're going to need it for. Those moments yeah. that surprise you, you know? You're always well, Remember prepared. there was one day we were just we came to the office and we had a meeting set up in the basement and nobody had scheduled ahead to have the door unlocked. And it was like, oh, got it. Just popped out the multi-tool, took out the slotted screwdriver, whatever you call it thing, and popped the hinges out of the door, and we proceeded to have our meeting. What? I mean, it- Wait, what? <laughs> Rewind. We are now breaking into various secured rooms with our multi-tool? It's a room we had permission to be in. We just didn't, the door hadn't been unlocked. Oh my gosh. That is classic. It's it's just about having tools. Ruben, you're, you're the, you're the person that everybody wants to have with them in case something happens. You are, you've got the tool to get the job done. Dork. I'm that geek. I think <laughs> yeah. only you would be like, "Oh, this locked door won't stop us. Let me just take the hinges off." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Actually, I did that back when I was living um, in Roseville. This was after I graduated college. I had a storage unit in the basement, and I lost the lock for my padlock on it, and so I just took the hinges off the door <laughs> to get it worked, in, and it worked. Yeah. I had no other it's, options. It's nice to be able to circumvent that stuff, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, we're almost done with our list. few other things here. Next one, an adjustable wrench. Now, I, I want to say Crescent wrench. Yeah. But Crescent is a brand name. We okay. just need to say an adjustable wrench. It's one of those wrenches where it's got this little worm drive thingy where you, you adjust the threads and you can change the opening of the wrench to be big or small. I, I think that's a good tool for everybody to have. What do you think, Tess? I mean, I, you've thought a lot about this, and these tools are definitely practical things to have, but I can't remember the last time I used one, to be honest. I, but I'm not All doing right. like plumbing projects or I don't know. I'm assembling. I haven't assembled things in a while, so... Yeah, and this is probably more commonly used on plumbing projects, I think. I mean, it's yeah. if you want to replace your own faucet or you're doing really any type of plumbing project, you're probably going to need one of these. You're probably going to need an adjustable wrench. And I'm not saying get the full open-end box wrench set. Just one adjustable wrench will get you so much farther along. This is probably one of my lower priority items Mm because you are getting into some different stuff, maybe some plumbing here. But I I used it when I used to wrench on my bikes when I was a teenager too. Mm -hmm. Just handy to have those. So yeah. I'll say an adjustable wrench. You don't need to spend a ton of money on it. Probably my favorite one is actually made not by Crescent. It's made by Channel Lock, which again is a brand name. Okay. And this one is called the Wide As Wrench, (laughs) W-I-D-E-A-Z-Z. And uh, it's got super wide jaws and it's a really short handle. So it can fit in your tool pouch, but it's it's, uh, very versatile. Love that one. And then, all right, we're almost done with the list. Two more here. Okay. A precision screwdriver set, a jeweler's screwdriver set, little screwdrivers. Oh, the tiny ones. For little stuff. Yeah. Tiny ones. Mm-hmm. $2 set, maybe a $5 set. Yeah. What do you think? You know, <laughs> it. you can get by without it, but like once every few years, you'll probably need it for something. Either your glasses fall apart or you have to replace a battery on something small and it has one of those little screws and you'll be trying to figure out how to open it. Ask me how I know, like using knives, using (laughs) whatever you have around, but it would be so much handier if you have these little precision screwdriver sets. Yep. Yep. It is. I, I have some reason to pull mine out at least monthly, I think. Monthly? Monthly. Wow. And even if I'm even if I'm not even turning screws, even if I'm just using the little slotted end and I'm sitting on a long call and I'm looking at my keyboard and I'm looking at all this gunk and these little oh cracks my in my keyboard and I'll pull out my <laughs> slotted and I'll be cleaning my keyboard while I'm on a long call or something. I mean just whatever. To clean underneath I, your fingernails, you know. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No. No. <laughs> don't, don't tell anyone about this. <laughs> um, As a toothpick after a meal. <laughs> all right. I have my limits. Yes. 
<laughs> uh, okay, you've made your case. Yes, they are helpful and useful to have. Multi-purpose, apparently. And um, cheap. And, and cheap. cheap. Yeah. Okay, so what's and, the last, right. last thing? Last on one. All right, this probably the most controversial one. You can punch holes in my argument for this one more yeah. than anything else, Tess. A little giant ladder. Yeah. Okay. So it's a multi-purpose ladder for anyone that doesn't know. It's got all these various settings where you can make it short, make it tall, make it do uneven, whatever you call it, uneven foot height. So you can yeah. work on a stair staircase or yep. something. All of that is nice. So it's, again, if you're someone who just wants one ladder, that can get the job done. I see why you got this on your list, but it's heavy and it's bulky. And it's a little awkward. And so it takes some getting used to. And if you're someone who's not comfortable or maybe can't carry a ladder that's that heavy, then I would say get something that's a little bit more, something that's easier to move around, that's lighter and a little more user-friendly. Okay. All right. I'll comment on that. So if you are going to do that, I'd say a substitute would be maybe getting two different ladders. Probably one would be... A, an A-frame ladder. Yeah. Maybe get a lighter fiberglass yeah. A-frame ladder that goes up six feet. Yeah. I've got an eight-foot one, and I'll tell you, it's, eight feet. It doesn't sound that high, but it's that it's is tall. yeah, it is so tall. It's it's hard it, to move around too. I think if yeah. we're talking about for someone that needs something lighter, you know, six foot is is good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Nice light six foot A-frame ladder. And then you also need a ladder to get on your roof. For yeah. One story up, clean your gutters, hop onto the roof to, you know, cl clean your dryer exhaust, do whatever, get, yeah. get the, get the branches off your roof, whatever. If you're a homeowner, you need access one story up. And I I'd say you could get a very small extension ladder. But before I did that, I'd probably get one of the ladders that you got, Tess, one of those yeah. extended and climb ladders. Yeah, I love that ladder. And I know we've, I've talked about it a lot on this podcast, but it is so lightweight and it's collapsible so it can fit in the, like, the back seat of your car. And it's really easy to just you know, extend, climb up, and then you can even ladder hop from a lower roof to a higher roof with it. So it's, I think it's multi-purpose as well. I, that's what I use every day doing inspections to get into attics. And it was just so much easier to carry that ladder up and down stairs, I thought, and to get into closets and small spaces. Those are nice ladders. I, I'm yeah. with you. I, I just find the, the little giant a little bit, you got a few more uses with the little giant and to address the part about being about it being bulky, I've got a great video I recorded of my daughter Lucy. She's well, I recorded it when she's a, she was eleven. Where I've got her taking the ladder, carrying it. She sets it down. She unfolds it. She extends it up into the A-frame, and then she puts it back together like nobody's business. And so my thing is, if I got my eleven-year-old daughter doing this and making it look effortless, I think just about any adult can manage. What do you think? I think Lucy's an exceptional kid and <laughs> and so that's pretty awesome. I also am wondering how early did you start training Lucy on that ladder? Like as soon as she could walk? Never did anything. We did during the, the Structure Tech Company picnic, we did a little ladder Olympics where it was, we, we did, you know, like a punt, pass and kick type of competition for home inspectors. And one of the things you had to do was unfold your ladder and put it back together. And she was watching us all do it and she just got obsessed. So she spent like an hour at the picnic practicing oh how to my fold it and unfold it. Oh and my gosh. She got it down. I mean, she nailed it. Is she going to compete next summer? I think she should. I, I do she too. definitely would have beat some of the inspectors on our team. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she was well, good at it. You know, I do. I agree. I agree. Little Giant can do a lot of different things. It's very versatile, but you, you know, you have to be strong. You have to be capable and it takes a little bit of practice. But once you, yeah, yeah once, once you cross that barrier, then it's a great ladder. But, you know, to your point for, for space savings though, extend and climbs take up hardly any space. Yeah. And they will get you in just about every place a little giant will get you to. Yes. Agreed. What do those cost, you know? Oh my gosh. I think, I mean, this was probably, this is pre-pandemic pricing. I want to say like 150 bucks. I mean, I'm okay. going to say I, that they're probably close to 200 now, but I haven't looked recently. Okay. They're That's not pretty cheap. comparable. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not cheap. To a little giant. They're probably the most, this is the most expensive thing on the tool list for sure, a ladder. Probably so. 
yeah. probably or so. Or maybe a drill. Yeah. <laughs> How much are the how much are drills these days? You can get away with an inexpensive drill. I mean, Milwaukee, if you just buy the drill without batteries, and the thing is, once you're in the batteries, you can get all the different tools that take that battery line. Yeah. You could get an impact driver for probably 50 bucks, I bet, okay. maybe 75. Yeah. I think a lot of times they sell it as a package deal, a drill and an impact driver together, and it's cheaper to do that. If if you don't have sure. any tools, you could just buy that kit. Yep. It comes with the batteries and the chargers and stuff too. But yeah, well, you know, I think this was a well thought out list, Ruben. Well, thank you, Tess. Thank I, you I'm glad you weren't able to punch too many holes in it. You got a few, but I was able to convince you on most of them. Yeah, you were. And um, yeah, for anybody listening, I, it's, you know, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you don't have any tools of where to start, but you just keep picking away at it. Add one thing at a time and, you know, it's it's manageable. You may not yeah. have a drill in every room or, you know, multiple bits in every corner of your house like Ruben, but you don't need all of that. You can get by with it, minimal. Yeah, it'll it'll come with time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. And if uh if you want to see the printed list, you can check out our blog. You go to structuretech.com and right on the homepage at the top, you can see a link that says blog. We will put a link to that particular blog post in the show notes for this show. And I, I also made a video just going over it. And I hold up a lot of these different tools in my video. So you can you can see me talking about them similarly there. But I don't yeah. have anybody arguing with me in that one. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, no, I appreciate it. We need, we need opposing viewpoints. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. Well, thanks for helping out today, Tess. Always good to see you. Yeah. Good discussion. Yes, this was really fun. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll catch you next week. Take care.